Hi everyone. <laughs> Welcome. I was just checking to make sure I had my camera pointed the right direction. Okay, we're here to do a collective message. So whatever wants to come through, that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to start with some astro cards. Ooh, that was fast. We have the IC, the lowest point in the birth chart. All right, this represents our roots, our ancestry, our home. And then we also have the third house of communication, short distance travel. So these energies are strongly representative of both Cancer, the IC, and Gemini. They are actually right next to each other in the astrological wheel. So there's something about maybe short distance travel, something to do around the home, what your ancestry, talking about your roots, communicating about the past even, the origins, how this all started. What else? The first house, arrival, the house ruled by Aries. Why am I the way that I am? We're going to talk about your ancestry and we're going to figure it out. Why am I the way that I am? Here I am. I have arrived. going with the spirit where are we going Ooh, the ninth house exploration literally where are we going that is the house of travel ruled by Sagittarius so there's something about where we are now to where we are going maybe talking about that okay all right you might be considering a trip you might be thinking about moving but there's a sense of, I have my roots here, but I would like to go there. Maybe even more deeply now understanding where you have come from. Let's get some archetypes. What is this about? Spirit, wow, that just drip, drifted across the table. <laughs> the kiss, the touch, the chemistry, the sex. Sensual expressiveness, merging, inviting, versus neediness, pressure, dominance, disrespect. So there's something about um, an intimate intimacy here. There's intimacy here. A relationship, maybe. We have the gem, the diamond, the gold, the inner treasure. Unique, shining, generative, irreplaceable, envy, greed, grasping. Okay. Something you have is valuable. The maiden, the virgin, the princess, the innocent, curious, enchanting, sensual, full of vitality versus pretends, projects, denies, fantasizes. I feel like you are seeing yourself in a new way. Okay, maybe you're seeing your past in a new way. A new understanding, right? Of how, of, of how you have been and who you have been. There's a softening here. There's a softening here. There is sort of this energy of falling back into the feminine essence of allowing ourselves to be soft. Coming to see ourselves as valuable. Reclaiming innocence and curiosity. Mm. 
no longer tied to any sort of projection, any sort of projections that have been cast our way. Able to start over. Because the cord that we have with who we have been extends firmly into the ground and into the past. Not tying us to it, but giving us a sense of safety and peace wherever we go. Okay, that is just what's coming through so far. Ooh, it's emotional. It's emotional. All right. Um, who are you? Who is the querent? Who is the collective today? There might be something around a romantic connection here. We'll see. The strength card. Who is the collective? This is a strong Leo solar energy, the three of swords. The two of wands, judgment, the knight of swords. Strong and resilient in the face of pain, in the face of difficult choices. A difficult choice in particular, it feels like, where you are feeling inclined to take some sort of action. This is a very, yeah, like a, <laughs> a very strong energy. Wow. Our powers of descriptiveness just don't, it never cease to amaze me. Okay. <laughs> Being facetious. Um, strong in the face of pain and choice, ready, desiring to make a strong choice for movement or for expression. What is this pain about with the Three of Swords here? What is this pain? What is the Three of Swords? What is the pain around? The Wheel of Fortune and the Seven of Wands. The pain is around how we must stand up for the change that we wish to see in our lives, maybe in those who it will affect. Things are changing that can feel painful in itself, but recognizing that something here definitely needs to happen, definitely needs to shift. It pains me to do this. It pains me to say this, but it pains me. It, pain <laughs> it pains me to say that this is how it has to be. We have the tower on the back of the deck. This change is a large one with the Wheel of Fortune. So it could affect, it definitely affects you. It affects a lot of people, maybe. That's just coming out in, in, in rippled ways that you cannot directly witness. Okay, show us the choice here with Judgment and the Two of Wands and the Nine of Swords. What is this moving towards? The Seven of Swords. The Four of Cups. Strong Choice. The Emperor. It's like... Four of Pentacles on the back of the deck with the Nine of Swords. I'm looking at these cards and it's almost like this person is here with the swords and the cups. It's like, it's like the same area, but a different season. Okay. It's like waiting, staying in one place during the night and into the day, during the winter and into the spring, a strong choice to wait. 
A strong choice to wait to make a decision, okay? A decision to wait to make a decision. The decision has not been made yet is what this is saying to me, that there's some time that you have allowed, maybe even surrendered time to pass in order to make some sort of choice here with the emperor. Maybe a whole season. It's like sleeping on it, but maybe many sleeps. But when you do make that decision, it seems like it is going to be absolute. It's like, this is what I'm doing. But until that time comes, until you get some sort of sign, until you get some sort of direction or strong suggestion, you're going to stay put until the right opportunity shows up. But when you do see it, you're going to go for it. Okay, let's see an outside energy that you're dealing with. Who is the collective dealing with? What is an outside energy? Oop. The two of pentacles. Outside energy for the collective. The king of pentacles and the knight of cups. This person could be balancing a lot of physical, financial priorities a strong um, earthy energy here that desires to have control in their physical world, have all of their, their priorities in check. This person could be quite busy, but there is a sense here of um, a romantic with the Knight of Cups. There's some sort of romantic inclination with this person is it directed at you maybe and don't pay attention to the gender that's irrelevant these are just energies okay this person could feel like they don't have the time or the resources in order to do what it is that they would like to do toward you what what is it that this person desires this person that the the collective is dealing with here what do they desire from the collective what is it that they want the nine of cups the eight of pentacles What do they want from the collective? The Four of Wands. Okay, what is the Eight of Pentacles here? What is this person working on? What is it that this person wants to work on? They could be saying that they want to take a break from their work, from their duties, to come see you, to spend some time with you, some quality time. But let's see, what is this Eight of Pentacles? Death. The Queen of Cups, the Eight of Swords. So this person wants to get more practical. <laughs> All right. This is like revisiting a situation. Okay. Because so far they have been in their head and their emotions, maybe experiencing some difficult emotions and thoughts around the relationship. I had to close the door. So it's like they want to bring this energy into the physical where it can, where some sort of practical application of what they've been feeling and thinking can be put into effect. The death card here is interesting. This person may want to talk about what they've been going through, some transformative experience that they've had, what they've realized, what they've been thinking about. Um, they may want to put in some effort into the relationship, but still have a good time at it. 
it gives the energy of like, let's go for a walk and we can talk about things so that we don't have to stare at each other in the face <laughs> like that. Okay. So I feel like this, this has got to be a romantic sort of situation, like your value, it's like who you are at a, at a deep soul level feels like, it feels like you've been put in touch with more of yourself, right? And maybe this person has too. Maybe you both have been going through this. It's like, there's a desire to talk about what has transpired. And there's some sort of attraction. There's some sort of desire to um, communicate. There's a desire to, um, I'm hearing coalesce. What does that mean exactly? Put something together to work something out, to see eye to eye, but also not too much of the eye to eye. <laughs> okay, just enough. Just enough. I'm hearing some songs, but I'm not sure exactly what they are. Okay, let's see. What does the star seed work your light oracle have to say? About whatever is going on here with you and this person. Longing for home, belonging, the original light workers. Oh, there's a sense of looking for home and belonging. Maybe it's you with this person. You find your sense of belonging, right? The I see the root. That is our home, the fourth house. Looking to reclaim our roots, but maybe with a newer person or a new experience. I don't know who this person is to you. But there's a sense of looking for something of the past within the present, right? The thread that carries through the past into the future, something that we find in common so we don't feel like we are just uh, sloshing about out in the ocean or, you know, wandering aimlessly. There's some sort of common thread, like a person where they look at you and they say, I see you like a companion. Then we have the card of transformation. Things are changing at a cellular level, deep healing. That's what we're talking about here is the death card. There's been a transformation here. There's been a reckoning here. And there's a choice that is going to be made by you. But it's like, in the meantime, there's also this relationship. So um, it's like this person wants to come together and feel that they belong and also to to speak about something particular. There's just, like we said, there's a softening in this energy. There's a softening. I'm hearing polenta. <laughs> okay. Milk duds. <laughs> now, spirit, what is this ninth house about? What is this ninth house exploration about? I feel like it has it to do with the choice. The Knight of Swords. Like we said, it was back here, the choice, the judgment, the, this is what I'm doing. This is where I'm going. Knight of Swords. Taking the swift action. I feel like there could be a swift action that's coming up for you regarding whatever this is. It's something that you have, you have decided to wait until it's the right choice. It's like, now I will take action. It's like, like that. Knight of Swords, Ninth House Exploration. I am moving and I'm moving fast. Okay.
Queen of Wands. Hello. That's travel, movement. Talking about movement, talking about travel, actually traveling. I feel like this is actually, you know, it's like Mercury and Sagittarius. Hello, ninth house. Exploration, looking at the possibilities, what can be. Things are changing at a cellular, cellular level. What is changing at a cellular level? With the sense of belonging that we are, that we have. The mother star. This is the card that says it's all worth it. Deep healing, the healing is happening. The healing is worth it, right? The star card comes after the tower. It's about how we heal after those moments of upheaval, after those, you know, ego deaths, after those being stripped away of what is no longer authentic or serving us. That says we are healing, that we are growing, that, that all of this has been worth it. The angels are near, okay? The nine of wands. You may be at a period right now where you feel, um, you feel tired, right? You feel tired of striving. You feel tired of the not knowing, right? The moon card comes out, of course. You feel tired of like, ah, I'm wandering through the dark. I'm wandering through the desert. I'm splashing about in the ocean. Whatever element that you feel, I'm flying through the air. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know where I'm going. All I, all I know is I'm tired. All I know is I, I hope that all of this is worth it. The mother star says, yes, it will be. And I feel like you have somebody here that feels like home to you. That feels like you have a sense of belonging. Okay. How do you know this person? The lovers, hello. The king of wands. <laughs> this person feels like a very strong soulmate. There's a lot of attraction here with this person. Nine of swords is on the back of the deck. They could have brought you a lot of anxiety, worry, The focus is on love today. Let love carry you. I'm getting whether this experience with a person shows up for you in your, in your life today or not. Remember that you still have the choice to choose love. to tune into gratitude. This is very expansive in the heart chakra right now. Spirit does not want you to be disappointed if your person, whoever you think that is, does not come through physically for you. You are loved. But for some of you, there is somebody who wants to come through. I'm here. Let's talk. Wow, yeah, the third house is opposite from the ninth house and in the middle is the arrival. Before you go on this journey, I'm here. Where I've been, where I am now, where I am going, wow. Let's talk about all of the things. <laughs> I 
Let's get some cards from the Pleasure Alchemy deck. Show us some more energies for this for this glorious day. <laughs> Permission. Eye contact. Oh. <laughs> what did I say? You have permission to make eye contact. <laughs> you have permission. Remember, not too much, just enough. Spirit's funny like that. Questions? <laughs> you have permission to make eye contact and to ask questions. All right. I don't know. Somebody needs to hear that. There's a there's a very um, conversational element to this energy. It's a, um, an exchanging of information, right? Gemini, Sagittarius, all the details, the bigger picture, talking about ourselves. Who am I? Who have I been? Okay, there's. it feels like an important conversation is coming up for somebody. Where are we at? 27 minutes. I don't have much more time, so why don't we... Pull a card here from the Dreamweaver's Oracle. And then we'll close it off. I'm hearing with a kiss. Okay. Dreamweaver's Oracle. Ooh, we have a card that flipped. Two of them did. A firebird is called to soar. Let the fire dragon sleep, cards 28 and 2. I don't know when those flip, but okay. A fire bird is called to soar. Being fully yourself, knowing who you are and who you're becoming. What did we say? What did we say? That's what we're talking about, who we have been, who we're becoming. Authenticity shining on behalf of the divine. Do you know who you are, what you truly value, what matters to you, and how you generally feel about things, genuinely? Can you be that person without worrying what others think? You are a unique and special being with your own path, your own journey to travel. You have incarnated with a purpose built into your very being. You don't have to look for it. Um, you don't have to look for it ever. It's inside you and has been all along. This is something to celebrate. Just as a great symphony is made up of many instruments, each one integral to the whole, your special note is essential to the great song of life. You need to play your note and not someone else's. So at this moment, being yourself, speaking up about what's important to you and making choices from an authentic desire to participate is always what's best for everyone. You have come so far in your life. It's time to be proud of who you are and what you have to offer the world. Like a firebird is called to soar, so are you called to express the fullness of yourself and shine. Just remember your true heart. It's okay to be vulnerable. Take off the masks you hide behind. Then and only then can you make an empowered choice to fly. Ready? The Dreamweavers think you are. I'm only going to read the initial, I think, um, essential meanings of the card number two. But, uh, yeah, because I don't need to read out of, yeah, all right. Um, all right. This one is a warning to stay out of drama, respecting the consequences of possible dangerous outcomes dealing with contrary people. Okay, so some of the individuals, right? Didn't we say something about this? Tuning into love and not whatever else, whatever else is going on. It's like letting the dramatic situations kind of fall away and being your authentic self. There's something really important coming up, it feels like, for a lot of you. So um, 
this is very exciting and I love to see all the ways that the cards kind of work together and form something that, that is very cohesive like this. It feels it feels very lovely. And so I hope that this is your reading for, for those of you that this resonates with. And um, I will see you again soon. Bye.